Hello, and thank you for joining me today. My name is Leah Swain, and I work for Sertum Solutions, and I am a QuickBooks Pro Advisor with a specialty in point of sale. So today I wanted to do a brief demo of QuickBooks point of sale version 19 for those who have not seen it. And I also want to touch on the integration that it has with QuickBooks Financial Desktop. So give me just a moment, and I'm going to share my screen. And here we will go to the home page of QuickBooks Point of Sale. Now this is the multi-store level, but there are many different levels of QuickBooks Point of Sale, Pro and multi-store. So multi-store is the one that we're going to go over today, but most of the functionality is the same as what you would see with Pro, and there's a little bit more limitation built in with Basic. You are looking at the main screen of QuickBooks Point of Sale. If you're not familiar what the functionality is, the software essentially is your platform for your cash register and your brick and mortar store. Now it does, like I said, integrate with QuickBooks Desktop for your financial tracking. It also can integrate with QuickBooks Online. That said, it does have a little bit of limitation when it's linking to the online version, but if that's something that interests you, please reach out to me and we can go over that information. It also does integrate with your e-commerce platform using Webgility. If that's something that interests you, reach out to me. Those are a couple things that we're not going to touch on today, but they are important. So please reach out to me and I'd be happy to go over that with you. For the point of sale today, the first thing that if you've never seen the system before, it might be a little concerning how busy the main window looks. You don't need to be concerned about that. The reason that there's so many icons in the center and buttons and lists is the system is very user friendly. So it is set up to work for your employees, whether they be new or used to working with um, point of sale software. It gives them different options to drive through the software. So, for example, in the center, you have the icons that will drive you to whatever function you're looking for, just like you would be using buttons on a tablet. You have buttons here on the side, the left hand side, and these are customizable. So you can set up different functions, um, for example, adding items. You can move that button here on the bottom and you can drive it up or down if it's something that you use quite often, you would want to put it at the top. Now, typically, like I said, make a sale is something that we use the most often so i leave that at the top of my buttons at the top you have the old school way of the drop down lists if that is easier for your employees that's built into the system as well so the first thing that we're going to do is go to look at our customer list all of our screens have ai search here at the top and what that means is you will be able to type in anything that you want to search in your customer information for so you can research a customer by their name their phone number their address um, email address, what have you. You can search through multiple options. So let's take a look. I'm going to pull myself up here and you can see what information is retained in the customer list. There's obviously their contact information, has their customer ID, their tax information. So you can set up different tax. If a customer is tax exempt, you can set them up at, to be tax exempt. And you can track customers as a company. So if you have one company that comes in and they have multiple employees underneath, you can track them as a company and then find the employee as they make purchases. This is the option to set this customer up with QuickBooks in, um, account. So if you have customers who come in and they make one time purchase or they make a one time payment monthly, you can set them up with a QuickBooks charge account and set up a credit limit and everything. You have customer notes, does do statistics to show what your rating is and all this information, basically reporting for this individual customer. You can see their sales returns, how much they've saved in discounts mm -hmm. and so on. You have the option to add rewards members to your point of sale. Rewards is something you can turn on and turn off. So if you're not currently doing rewards, that's okay. You can turn off the function. And then your sales history for this customer. It saves everything this customer has ever purchased and you would just double click that to pull up the receipt. The next thing that we will look at is our inventory. So your item list can have up to 100,000 items. You'll see in this software for my sample company, I have a little over 108,000 items and it works perfectly. I've had the system up to 130,000 items and it kind of gets a little bogged down, but it still does work. Um, but I don't recommend going really over 100,000 items. So we'll take a look here at our inventory and how that looks inside the point of sale system. Let's go ahead and add work. I'm going to act like we're adding a new item and you'll notice here at the top you have the option to add a picture to your item so when your customers are ringing out your employees can verify that what they scanned is actually the item that they are selling your item name will go here inventory is 
Um, your type is going to be inventory, non-inventory, service items, assembly, or group items. So if you think of assembly and groups, if that's not something you're familiar with, um, assembly is an item that you're going to take individual pieces of your inventory and build them together to build one assembly item. You cannot sell those individual pieces without breaking your assembly, and you cannot sell an assembly item without building the assembly. Whereas a group is sort of the same way, however, they are not pieced together. So the easiest way to think of that is like if you had a bicycle shop and there was lots of individual pieces of a bicycle, you would assemble those items to build a bicycle for sale. If you wanted to sell, say, a handlebar set, you would have to actually break that assembly item and take apart the bicycle in order to sell an individual piece. Group items are a little bit different. So essentially that is if you wanted to put items together where a customer purchases all of these items at the same time, they would get an additional discount. So think of um, having a boutique and it being Mother's Day and you say if you buy candles, if you buy a candle and a sweater and a pair of socks for your mother on Mother's Day, we will give you a group discount item. So that is what a group item is. Um, back to our inventory item. Got a little carried away. I love assemblies and groups. That's something that interests you or you need that for your company, reach out to me because I love them. They're my favorite. Um, okay, so you have obviously your size and attribute. You do have a button here that says style. And what this is, is for items that have different sizes or colors, you would set that item up as one item and then you would break it out individually in a grid for sizes and attributes. So think of a shirt, for example, you would have it in red, black, and orange, and it would be sized small, medium, large, extra large, and so on. So that makes it a little bit easier when you need to change pricing or do receiving for items um, that have styles. You can just pull up the grid and see exactly what you have on hand. And you can also make changes for one individual item without having to go and change the 20 different options and sizes. Whoops, we lost our thing here. Okay. So next you have pricing. You do have price levels here. So if you click on this button, it sets up different price levels. So you have regular price, sale price, employee, wholesale, custom price, MSRP, cost, and margin. What this means is if you have customers who are wholesale customers or you give your employees a special discount or whatever, there's many different price levels that you can set per your item. And then you would just assign those price levels to your customers when you set them up. You have your on-hand quantity is here. Another thing I want to touch on, you can have alternate vendors. You can have up to five vendors per item. When you click on here, it gives you your different UPCs, alternate lookups, and order costs. Your reorder point is what you set for the system to suggest your purchase order. When you are in base, or excuse me, when you're in point of sale pro or multi-store, you can use purchase orders and it will suggest a purchase order for you. Um, here is e-commerce. If you set your system up to integrate with e-commerce, you would select this and it would tell the system that this item is listed in e-commerce and you could list out your online stores. The reason for that is for reporting. If you wanted to pull sales information in your reports, you can break out your item reports to show what was sold in brick and mortar and what was sold versus each individual e-commerce store. Um, QuickBooks options here is for setting up your item and how it's going to map into your QuickBooks financial piece. So we're going back to our home page at this time. Another option I do want to bring up is Windows. So if you are working in the system and you need to make a sale when you're doing receiving, you can go ahead and pause that receiving and just click on make a sale and drive somewhere else. When you do that, your receiving, for example, would be open in the background and you could go back to it. So you don't have to stop whatever you're working on to process sales. This is something that was new. It came out, I think, with version 18. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful feature. Okay, so let's go to our make a sale page. And here at the top is where you would scan the item that you're going to sell. We're just going to look for something red. And again, the AI feature, you can search anything that you want, whether it's the UPC, alternate lookup, color, price, department, what have you. You can just start typing or use your UPC scan scanner here and that brings your item into the sales receipt. Again, you can search for your customer information. So we're going to select on me. And it shows you at the top that I do have a charge account in QuickBooks. That's what this little green thing here is, the green dollar sign. If I was past due, it would be a red dollar sign. 
And if I did not have an account set up, there's no dollar sign at all. Gives you some basic contact information, the account balance and credit information. If you wanted to see more detail, you could click more info and it would pop up notes, things of that nature. In your item receipt, you can customize what columns show on your receipt and which ones do not. And you can increase and decrease your quantity here. Or of course, you could just continuously scan in items as you go. Um, you have your quick pick buttons on the side. So if you're wanting to give a discount, for example, you would click that, select the amount of discount that you want to provide, and it goes through. Another way to give discount is this button here. And you would say what your percentage discount is going to be. 15%, oops. And you can select the reason for the discount. So let's say this item was damaged. We're giving a 15% discount. You look at your bottom and it tells you the number of items you're selling, the total quantity sold. So you could sell two items, but um, you could sell one item, but have two quantity. So you'll see that here. Sometimes that gets confusing for people. So shows your subtotal discount taxes and your total. Your payment options are at the bottom. So cash, credit, debit, check, gift card, and account. I will say with version 19, they do have the new Tetra 5000 pen pad. So you can accept um, all the payments, the contactless payments. So you can take Apple Pay, Google Pay, all of that with the new pen pad that is released on version 19. <laughs> And at this point, we're just going to go ahead and say that they are paying cash. Save the amount and save only. Another thing that they've added in version 19 is you have the option to do save and email. So you do not have to go back to your history to email your customer a sales receipt. You can do it at the point of sale. For right now, we're going to go ahead and save only. Okay. So we've made some sales and we've looked at our customer list and our inventory list. Um, the other thing I wanted to touch on is in your sales window or on actually any window that you're in, you have this wonderful little button that says, I want to. So if you ever get in a window and you get stuck and you want to do some function, but you just can't remember how to get there, the I want to is a quick shortcut button. So you can see here that when you're making a sale, you can to an order, whether it's a sales order or layaway, you can ship these items. It goes through all of the things that you might might be helpful to do in that window. So it's kind of a shortcut trick, especially helpful for people learning the system for the first time. What I wanted to show you today was how the um, point of sale links to the QuickBooks desktop financial software. So I have QuickBooks desktop already linked in. You'll see here's my sample company. And what we're going to do today is just show you how quick and easy it is to update that. You drop down from your financial menu, say update QuickBooks desktop. And it's going to connect to that software. I have it set up so that the software does not have to be open in the background. It will connect without being open. Um, you can decide that preference when you set up the synchronization. So it takes just a moment. It's sending over information because it's telling the system that I just went through that purchase. Normally it does not take this long. I guess it's been a while since I updated. Okay, excellent. So you see it brought through um, 26 new customers were added and a sales receipt was sent. So we're going to close that out for right now. I'm going to show you the purchase order function. So what you do in QuickBooks point of sale when you go to add a new purchase order and I do have on that I, it allows me to suggest purchase orders. But in this situation, we're going to go ahead and just key in some information here. We're just going to select some stuff that we want to order. It's going to be an open range item. And then we have that set. We're going to say save. Our vendor is going to be MNF Western Products, which is correct. And that purchase order has been built. Now, when you receive items, you go into your purchase order list. You select the items that you want to receive. So select your purchase order first. And your drop down say, I want to receive items. It's going to pop up what items are still open on this purchase order. So we're going to key in the amount of the items that we received. And it will take us to a receiving voucher. If there was anything in the um, order that you received that was not on the purchase order list and you need to add manually, you would do that here. Here we go. We're going to add in those jersey gloves. 
and then we are going to save only. Now what this does is it tells the system that these items have been added to the inventory. So if we went back and checked those items, they would be increased by the receiving there. We can go into our, it's not where I wanted to go, into our receiving history and find the one that we just did today. Okay, and you'll see here it says needs billing information. So what we'll do, we'll see this is a vendor for Muck. We will go into enter in our discount and freight. And this is a function that you can turn on. This is not, um, you do not have to do this, but I always suggest that people do all of their purchasing and receiving through the point of sale system and enter in their billing information here as well. It just saves you a step on the back side. This information will drive over to financial and we'll take a look at that in a minute. So now we have done our receiving and we are going to go ahead and say we've received our invoice. And on our invoice, there was $15 of freight. So we add that in first and you'll see that the total increased by $15. And now we're going to enter in our billing information. So we're looking at our invoice. We're going to say invoice number 47470. The bill date is today. And I'm going to set up some terms. Go here and say that this is due on November, or excuse me, December 13th. And it shows that the net terms is 30 days due in 30 days. If you got a special discount for paying within 10 days or what have you, you could set up that information also. So we've saved our billing in information in the point of sale and the receiving history. Again, we're gonna real quick update our QuickBooks desktop. And it normally does not go this slow. So today it's just taking its sweet time. It's because I've been in there manually selling items and messing with stuff this afternoon for the demo. And it knows I'm doing strange things because I'm selling inventory we don't have and receiving items that are not with the same vendor. It'll take a second to use it. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop into our... QuickBooks Desktop. This is actually Accountants Desktop 2020, but it functions pretty much the same way for QuickBooks Pro, which is what I recommend integrating with your point of sale. So we will go here to our vendor list and pull up our vendor center. And we're gonna look for that invoice that we just created. And there you go. See, our vendor Muck has an invoice of two, an amount due of $215.70. Invoice number 47470 that we just created in the point of sale. So when we did our financial update, that information pulled over. Here you go. And it shows the bill has been entered. It also breaks out your expenses as we asked it to for our freight versus our item total. So you could pay the bill from here. You can also find it, you know, in your um, vendor pay bill center. It will populate all the open bills that you have and you can decide which ones you want to pay or which ones you want to hold off on. So we're going to go ahead and say Muck is paying and we're going to do a check for today's date and the check is going to come out of cash and drawer. <laughs> That's the only one I have. I'm going to call it cash. Normally you would not do that in practice and it will print our check. So that's beautiful. That is the integration and a brief overview of QuickBooks point of sale. If this is something that you want more information on, I know I kind of flew through some of the items um, and flew through some of the information, but if this is something that you think would be beneficial for your company or you want more information on the e-commerce integration or the QuickBooks online integration, I would be happy to discuss that with you. Just reach out to me. Again, my name is Leah Swain. And I am with Certum Solutions, and you can reach me at 980-242-2009. I hope you enjoyed the presentation today, and I hope you have a wonderful day.